Hi guys, PJ here. Today, taking a look at the release of The Last of Us Part 1 on PC. Well, more to the point on PCs with 6 gigabyte graphics cards, which should be enough to move most things, but this game is, well, I warn you off the bat, not good. The first thing when you finally installed the game is waiting and waiting and waiting for it to be building the shaders. This takes about an hour, so don't think you're gonna play it in a rush, and if you do try and play it, it's not gonna happen, all right? So wait for the shaders to get to 100%, then play the game. As you can see in the background, it is super, super slow. Now, the two PCs used in question for this video are uh, Ryzen 2700, which is a 8-core, 16-thread, with a GTX 1660 Ti, that's a 6 gigabyte graphics card. And the other system is a i7 Intel 7970, 6-core, 12-thread, and a RTX 2060, again, 6 gigabytes. Both of them are SSD setups and both of them are recording to a separate ssd so it shouldn't sort of cause any problems okay with that in mind we will skip forward to some gameplay what you are basically seeing here is the rtx 2060 system and it's sort of my refined settings which i will show you a little bit later on you will notice the CPU is pretty much maxed all the time. This game is really, really heavy on CPU, which is a little bit odd. I'm not quite understanding the balance they've got going on here. I mean, the Steam reviews for this are putting it in the sort of 30% or 36% positive area. It's really, really lowly reviewed. Everyone's saying it's in poor report, it's not very good, etc., etc. My findings do that. back that up. This is a bad port. This needs a lot of optimization patches for it to get anywhere near good. It's not just the fact that it's heavy on CPU and GPU. It does have some other problems. The game does crash from time to time, so saving frequently is very, very important. Means more people and the other thing is, it has a built-in um, memory display of how much VRAM you're using when you're setting up your graphics options and stuff, which I'll show you very shortly. And from what I can make out, it's not actually fully accurate. Sort of, it's registering too much all the time. At the moment, we're using, what, five gigabytes of VRAM, roughly? GPUs, any sort of 60, 70% usage, and we're using, what, 14, 15 gigabytes of normal RAM. So 2060 handled this pretty good in these optimized settings. It was playable, it was okay. If I wanted it to be fairly stationary, I'd sort of lock the FPS down to 30 and sort of play it in that sort of scenario. But overall, it performed okay and it looked pretty good. I mean, I am going to say off the bat here, if you cut a PS5, play it on the PS5. You know, it, it's like that, unfortunately. It's a bad PC port. We've had quite a lot of them in recent months. And this one has... It's been rushed out, let's face it. The, the TV series has just wrap, wrapped up and they wanted to get it out very quickly. So, let's move on and have a quick look at some gameplay on the 1660. Straight away, it's pretty apparent things aren't quite right here. It's a bit different to the other one. The CPU is coping a lot better. As you can see, the cores aren't maxed out. There's more of them anyway to share the workload. And RAM seems to be slightly better managed, which is rather odd. VRAM, we're on 5.6 or nearly 5.7 gigabytes of VRAM, but the FPS is already down to 25, 26, and things do look a tad blurry in places. Now, both these cars are running on the AMD FSR2 setting for quality. Okay, so there is an upscaling from around 720p on both cards. So these are 1080p gameplay footages that you're seeing, but the base resolution is 720p using the upscaling, which you know you will see shortly. I will show you that. Overall, even though they're a similar spec card, the RTX card did cope better. It no kept the expected. FPS higher and it kept the image quality better. Now, technically between the two, the speeds, there's not really anything in it. It's only the RTX card has its ray tracing facility. 
but in practice in this game very odd you can run it on a ti certainly on a 1660 but you're gonna have to make a few more cutbacks so you know let's have a look at the settings and stuff that we used on well both these cards the optimal settings because when you load it in the game in from scratch and it auto detects it's going to put mostly low and a few mediums on these cards which is not good at 1080p so let's have a look at those settings quickly guys we have a separate one for display and a separate one for graphics options and there is an awful lot of them. In fact, there's even on-screen display to show you all your FPS and memory usages and everything. Not totally sure it's accurate, hence we're using MSI Afterburner for our readouts. But with these optimized settings, the game does look pretty good. It does play okay. FPS is still up and down a little bit, but not much you can do about that until the patches, you know, actually come in. Now you'll notice the render resolution, like I was saying, is 720p. That's its base one, and it upscales from that with its reconstruction technology. But if you put some of these on too low, some of the detail settings on too low, signs aren't readable, and things have no definition, just a blurry mess. So you're going to tweak this a bit, even though it looks like you're pushing your VRAM usage in the bar above. Now, don't pay too much attention to that, because like I said, I'm pretty sure it's not fully accurate. At the moment, we're using five and a half gigabytes of VRAM. We've got some nice settings. The game looks nice, by no means maxed out. So, you know, don't even think yeah. you can get anywhere near that. Even a 4070 Ti that a friend of mine's got cannot max this game out because it uses far too much VRAM. That's absolutely crazy, oh, yeah. but there you go. So, you know, you can get it play respectable enough on your 2060, no problem at all. It's just really high CPU temp uh, usage and your temps are obviously going to be running pretty hot on it if you're on air cooled, for example. But hey, let's have a look at the settings yeah, we used on the 1660. First things first, you'll notice the VRAM usage is actually showing over seven gigabytes. This didn't seem to have a detrimental effect though. I don't believe that was actually a true reading. Now, the thing with this one is we did kept the draw distance down to low, a couple of the bits and bobs on low or even off for that matter. However, some of the textures, like I was saying with the 2060, you've got to at least have them on medium or they lose all recognition. You won't be able to read signs on the wall. The floors are going to look muddy. So it's a bit difficult. Visual effects can stay on low. That's a nice one to save a bit of uh, GPU power on because I didn't notice much difference overall with that particular one. Some of the ambient lighting is very heavy. Shadows are very, very heavy. So you could tone them down a bit. Recommend you don't have shadows on low though because they're very blocky and, and look terrible to be honest with you. But some of the lighting solutions where the lighting follows the character or the shadows follow the character, etc., etc., they can be toned down. So here is a good example coming up to this wanted poster. The one that you're looking at, you know, is nice and clear to read, etc. The others are blurry. If you had the textures on low, walking towards that poster, it would be blurry. So you've got to at least have the textures on medium. FPS on this, not good. We do drop down to the low 20s while playing it like this. And, you know, that's an odd thing for showing the, the GPU is sort of 58, 60% a lot of the time, etc. Guys, it's an awkward game. It's a brilliant game, don't get me wrong. I completed this on PS3 and absolutely loved it back in the day. But it needs patches galore and to be honest with you by the time they've done that you might as well wait for it to be in a sale for, to be like 10 pounds on steam sale or cd keys or something great game boogie crashes a lot hard to run that's the bottom line thanks for watching bye for now